We're going to start chapter 20 talking about capital leases. And so um, just work along with me um, with the slideshow, and I'll incorporate some problems as we go through the various components of leases, operating leases and capital leases. So as we move on, this basically shows us what we're going to focus on being able to classify what type of lease we've got, the disadvantages and the advantages to leasing, and how they are presented in the financial statements. <coughs> so as we move on, leasing is utilized with many, many companies. And for GAAP purposes, the definition of a lease <coughs> is an agreement conveying the right to use property, plant, or equipment for a stated period of time. Now that's the key. It's, it has a stated period of time. And when we're dealing with a lease, we've got two um, individuals, a part of the lease, the leasee and the leasor, the, less the leasor. So the leasee is the one that is given the right to use the leased asset and in exchange for using that leased as asset, they're going to make some lease payments. The leasor is the one that gives up that right to use that asset, and the benefit they gain from that is um, receipt of future payments from the lease. So as far as dealing with the leases, there are two types of leases we're going to predominantly discuss one that's called an operating lease and another one that's called a capital lease. The focus for GAAP relates to leases um, that transfer almost all the risks and benefits of ownership is in economic substance, a purchase by the leasee and a sale by the leasor. So those types of transfers where really all the risks and benefits are transferred along is going to be determined or, or classified as a capital lease. Because the focus here is on economic substance over that legal form, now the legal form shows it to be a lease, but from the purpose of what's really going on, the it is a capital lease, and so as a result of the substance versus that legal form, it's going to be treated by the leasee as an asset acquisition along with that related liability. So from the lessor's, lessor's perspective, <coughs> it's viewed as either the sale of an asset or creating a financial instrument to um, fund that asset. The lease that doesn't transfer all the risks and all the benefits is going to be considered an operating lease. Now this lease is going to be viewed by both the leasee and the leasor as a rental agreement just because the rights to use that asset are for a very specific period of time, but really not all the benefits and all the risks are getting transferred along with that asset. So we're going to treat that as an operating lease, the other will be coined a capital lease. As we look to the various guidelines for a capital lease, the capitalization criteria involve that the lease transfers ownership of the property to the leasee by the end of the lease term. So basically the ownership is going to be transferred at the end of the term anyway. The lease contains what's called a bargain purchase option that we'll discuss. The lease term is equal to 75% or more of the estimated economic life of the leased property and the present value of all the minimum lease payments is going to be equal to 90% or more of the fair market value, fair value of the leased property. So when we've got these various criteria, then if any of these criteria are met, then it will be a capitalization, a capital lease. <coughs> the other criteria related to the present value of these minimum lease payments, for the leasee, these payments are going to be all the payments that are expected to be made over the life of the lease, 
which includes all the minimum payments required by the lease, payments required by a bargain purchase if there is one, and then any guaranteed residual value along with any payments resulting from a failure to renew or extend a lease. So all of these are going to be included in the minimum lease um, payment. So if the lease meets, doesn't meet any of those capitalization guidelines, then the a transfer of the majority of the risks and the benefits of that asset haven't occurred and it's going to be classified as an operating lease. And the leasee doesn't have to recognize this on their books as an asset and also as a liability. As an operating lease, the leasee just treats it as a rent expense each period. And, but to qualify as a capital lease for the leasor, another step gets added to this whole framework. And the leasor classifies a lease as a capital lease if it meets any one of the capitalization criteria and also has to have the following recognition criteria met both of these that the collectability of those payments is pretty predictable and that there aren't any uncertainties around the amount of unreimbursable costs that are going to be incurred by the lease or under the lease so both of those criteria need to be in place along with one of the capitalization criteria. So if we're dealing with a lease that's going to be classified as a capital lease, then the leaseor is going to account for it either as what's called a sales type capital lease or it could be a direct financing capital lease. Now the sales type capital lease usually comes about when we're dealing with some type of manufacturer or dealers gain or loss that gets recorded by the leaseor. The loss or the gain is going to exist when the fair value of that leased property at the beginning of the lease is going to be greater or, in the case of a loss, less than its carrying cost or its carrying value. Now when we're dealing with direct financing capital leases, there's not going to be a manufacturer's or dealer's profit. And for the leaseor, the lease is going to be an operating lease only if the lease meets none of those capitalization criteria or if it fails even one of those recognition criteria. Remember it has to meet both of those recognition criteria and only one of the capitalization criteria to be classified as a capital lease for the leaseor. In this case the leaseor doesn't have to recognize a sale or a receivable and the leased asset remains on the balance sheet. So let's take a moment to do a problem as it relates to um, leases. Let's look at the exercise 21. And as you can see here in 21, the determining a type of lease and subsequent accounting on January 1st of 2013 Caswell signs a 10-year cancelable at the option of either party agreement to lease a storage building from Wake Company. The following information pertains to this lease. The agreement requires rental payments of a hundred thousand at the end of each year. The cost and fair value of the building is two million the building has an estimated economic life of 50 years with no residual value. Caswell is going to depreciate the similar buildings according to a straight line method. It doesn't contain a renewable option clause. At the termination of the lease, the building reverts back to the leaseor. And then Caswell's incremental borrowing rates 14% per year. Wake set the annual rental to ensure a 16% rate of return. And then finally, executory costs of 7000 annually related to taxes on the property are getting paid by Wake. So we need to look at the capitalization criteria and from this determine what type of lease this is for the leasee. So 
the um, information as it relates to this, the number one, the agreement requires rental payments of 100000 at the end of each year. Um, is the present value of those lease payments equal to 90% or more of the fair value? Well, the lease payments minus the executory costs, so we take the 100,000 minus that 7,000 times the present value factor for 10 payments at 14%, so basically, the lease payment's present value is $485,098. <coughs> and that would not be equal to the 90% um, of the um, present value of the cost of the building because we know that the cost of the building our value of the building is two million, so four hundred eighty-five thousand oh ninety-eight is really twenty-four percent of the fair value of the building. So, in that case, the present value of the lease payments, um, one capitalization criteria is equal to ninety percent or more of fair value. In this case, it's not, so that wouldn't apply. Um, the cost and fair value of the building on January first is two million. Then the next one, the building has an estimated economic life of 50 years with no residual value. Caswell depreciates similar buildings according to the straight line method. Well, this lease is for um, 10 years. So the lease term has to be 75% or more of its useful life. And as we can see here, a 10-year lease life divided by a 50-year economic life is really only 20% or more of the life of the, the asset. So that would not apply to the lease term being 75% or more. <coughs> Next, the lease does not contain a renewable option clause. At the termination of the lease, the building reverts back to the leaseor. So the transfer of ownership at the end of the lease it doesn't occur in this one. It's going back to the lease source, so that criteria also is not met. And then um, we do not see a bargain purchase option here at all, so none of the criteria related to a capital lease would be in play here to um, what type of lease this is would um, definitely then be an operating lease for purposes of number one. Next, as we look to um, number two, it asks us to prepare journal entries on the leases books to reflect the signing of the lease agreement and to record the payments and expenses related to this lease for the years 2013 and the years 2014. So as we know, for 2013, our job would be to um, record a journal entry for December 31st, 2013, a rent expense of 100000 and we would credit cash for 100000 And then likewise, on December 31st of 2014, there would be a rent expense for 100,000, and again, we would credit cash for 100,000. Now let's take a look at <coughs> 22. As we look at exercise 22 here, let's see how this plays out a little differently. Um, Aiden Company signs a lease agreement dated January 1st, 2013 that provides for it to lease heavy equipment from Scott Rental Company beginning January 1st. The lease terms, provisions, and related events are as follows. <coughs> the lease terms four years. The lease is non-cancelable and requires annual rental payments of $20,000 each to be 
paid in advance at the beginning of each year. So the lease term here is four years. Um, is that lease term 75% or greater of its economic life? Um, in this case, the equipment has an estimated life of four years. And so in this respect, the lease term is going to be 75% or more of the economic life. So that one capitalization criteria is met, which would automatically make this a capital lease. Next, um, the cost and also fair value of the heavy equipment at the inception of the lease is 68036.62. The equipment has an estimated life of four with zero residual value. So we can look at the various payments the lease payments, which we'll look at down here, and the lease uh, the annual rental payments are twenty thousand and they're going to be paid in advance at the beginning of the year, so four lease payments. So we would come up with the present value of those four lease payments and based on the factor of four payments paid in advance at 12%, we would have 68,036.62. Well, is that 90% or more of the fair va value of the asset? It is. So that's another criteria here. Now the lease does not contain a renewal or bargain purchase option, so in that case, the bargain purchase option is not met. Um, Aiden agrees to pay executory costs. Um, Scott's interest rate implicit in the lease is 12%. Aiden uses the straight line method. Executory costs paid at the end of the year by Aiden are the insurance and property taxes for each of these years. So in this case, the it is a capitalization or a capital lease and it would be this for Aiden because that lease meets one of those capitalization criteria. Now the next job is to prepare a table summarizing the lease payments and interest expense for Aiden. So what we'll do here is we'll look at the various um, payments and interest and record that. So as you can see here I'm going to start by showing a, um, maybe I need to lower that a little, we'll have the date here, and here we'll have the annual lease payment. We'll have the interest at 12% of the unpaid obligation. And then last, we will have the balance of the capital lease. So for January 1st of 13, before the initial payment, we've got the balance of 68,036.62. Then, as we move on, on January 1st of 13, we received 20,000. And we will take the 68,036 
minus our 20,000 to provide us with a balance of 48,036.62. Now let's look at the end of 13, December 31st of 13. And as of December 31st of 13, we have accumulated interest of the 48,036.62 times our 12% rate. So based on this, we have interest accumulated of $5,764.39. We'll add that to the amount here to come up with a new balance of the capital lease obligation of 53,801.01. Now we move on to January 1st of 2014 where we pay an additional $20,000 and we'll show here the 53,000 minus our $20,000 payment provides us with a new balance of 33,801.01. Again, on December 31st of 2014, we are going to calculate our interest by determining the 33,000 times a 12% rate is $4,056.12. So our new balance is going to be the 33,801, and we'll add that. Again, January 1st of 2015, we have a $20,000 um, payment, and that will reduce our balance now to $17,857. As of December 31st of 2015, we will calculate our interest based on our 17,000 times 12%, which will provide us with 21,4287, um, our ending outstanding balance of 19,999, or roughly 20,000. We'll then show January 1st when we pay our $20,000 payment we have zeroed out the lease payment here. Okay, let's go back and continue on with this particular um, exercise. Now we need to prepare the journal entries for Aiden for the two years, or the years 2013 and for 2014. So as you'll be able to see here with Aiden, what we will do is start with the um, January 1st, 2013 leased equipment. We'll start with that fair value, 6803662, and we'll credit our capital lease obligation of 68,036.62. Then also on January 1st, we will show a capital lease obligation being reduced, capital lease obligation being reduced for 20,000, and we will credit our cash for 20,000. Now on December 31st, we'll show an interest expense of $5,764.39, and we'll have then an accrued interest on capital lease obligation for the same amount, $5,764.39. We'll also record in December our insurance expense for 1500 and we'll also record our property tax expense of 
of 6,000. Of course, credit our cash for that amount of 7,500. And then for the depreciation purposes, we'll show our depreciation expense of leased equipment of 17,009.16, which is our fair value of 680.36.62 divided by 4. And we'll show our accumulated depreciation on the leased equipment to be 17,009.16. Again, this is the 68,036 divided by four years to, to come up with that amount. Next for January of 2014, January 1st, 2014, we are going to um, show the accrued interest on the capital lease accrued interest on capital lease uh, capital lease obligation for the five thousand five thousand seven hundred sixty four dollars and thirty nine cents we'll also show our capital lease obligation of the fourteen thousand two thirty five sixty one And again, it's our 20000 minus the interest that has accrued because our payment is 20000 each at the beginning of each year. So 20000 here. So as you can see here, we debited our accrued interest. The, we reduced our capital lease, uh, lease obligation by the difference. And 20000 is our payment. On December 31st, we're going to accrue our interest expense again for $4,056.12. And we are going to show that as an accrued interest on capital lease obligation of 4056 and 12 Next, on, at the end of the year, we have to still pay the insurance expense of 1300 and the property tax expense of 5500 along with our corresponding credit to cash of 6800 And then for the depreciation expense we'll show will be down here at, at December 31st, our depreciation expense of our leased equipment, again divided by four years, straight line, and our accumulated depreciation of leased equipment for the 17,009.16. So these um, transactions here, these journal entries, are what well, the leasee would be recording for the purposes of a capital lease.